Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Myra Salcido with University of Texas Permian Basin, and uh, I'm talking you, to you today about the English 1301 course. This is a bit of an update. Uh, some students join late through no fault of their own. Uh, registration issues and things happened so that some students sort of came in the course the second or third week and we we are through almost through week five so if you're if you've been procrastinating about getting the work done not good because you are more than a month behind if you have not checked in and done the work i don't know um if you'll be able to make it at this point sorry uh i am running up against deadlines this Friday, uh, February 12th, I uh, will be submitting dual credit grades. So I will catch up as much as I can. Um, the work you've done is so that it's equal and everybody is at the same stopping point um, to report dual credit grades on Friday. And financial aid um, is also checking on people with scholarships to how well they're doing with attendance this Friday. So I, I have and athletes and extracurricular activity people. I have reports to do, just lots of reporting to do. So please try to keep up. I cannot keep opening and assignments and extending due dates much longer because we're gonna run out of semester uh, at some point. We are um, already, uh, you should be on Inkshed 6, Life Without Language, and it features literacy autobiographies. Now, what that means, literacy is usually reading and writing. There's lots of types of literacy. You can have a literacy of another language, uh, of you, it, you have three um, examples in the book. There's Eva Hoffman, and if you have English as a second or a third language, then you might be interested in, in her, what she has to say uh, coming from Poland, what it was like years ago. And uh, we have Helen Keller, who was not born deaf and blind, but after childhood illness became so, and you can imagine how frustrating that would be and how difficult to deal with both of those challenges and try to communicate with anybody in any way. So there's Helen Keller, Eva Hoffman, and then uh, narrative, Fred, Frederick Douglass, Narratives of a Slave, and uh, if you watch any of the African-American read-in and it's still, the recording is still available for extra credit. If you have time to watch 20 minutes of it, it's worth it. Um, and they talked about how uh, slaves in the 1700s especially were not permitted to learn to read or write because then they would know what was going on in the world and know about li liberty in other parts of the world and demand freedom or want freedom. And so they tried to keep everybody oppressed and uneducated. So uh, Frederick Douglass was quite a miracle that he learned uh, to read and write and to write some amazing pieces. Martin Luther King Jr. read his works and you can sometimes see that in the writings of King. So these narratives are to give you some idea about your own journey with uh, literature, how you became literate to read and write, whatever language it was. Was there ever a book that changed your idea about reading, like Divergent, The Hunger Games, uh, Diary of Anne Frank, something that you read that you have a passion about. And even if you're not a reader, become a reader. If sports is your thing, read about famous athletes 
their biographies and things like that. Um, try to read. Uh, good reading makes better writers. So, yeah, you learn a lot through reading the works of others, which we will do in this class in the peer reviews. I sent out groups yesterday. Uh, there were uh, four people inactive in the class. So, um, if you didn't get in a group, it's because I need to hear from you and see some action of activity before I assume you have dropped. Uh, and I will get that notice if you do, if you need to. Uh, so for, for your literacy autobiography, it needs to be three to five pages long. Three pages means the first draft which is coming up due uh, by the 13th or the 14th and the paper's final draft will be new, due next week but you have a first draft which do your best on that should be at least three pages to the bottom should include a pivotal moment a moment when you knew you really clicked or connected with reading or writing so people write poems and uh, I don't want to read your life history. In kindergarten, I did this. In first grade, I did that. Then in second grade, you know, it's not just life history. It's your journey. Did you have someone that read to you when you were younger? Uh, what made you want to become literate and able to communicate? And if you still feel like you're becoming literate, that's fine. We have a lot of international students and people that speak several languages and English is not easy. We have one student that speaks French, and that was always tough, French and German for me. Um, so there's no cover sheet for the first draft of your paper. You should get the ink shed life without languages completed by Saturday night before midnight. Do not wait for the clock to run down because you need to have responses to other people. For example, in uh, Barry Lopez uh, Inkshed uh, on entering a new place, uh, he should have responded to at least five students in the course in a paragraph each. If you haven't done that, that will impact your grade. It's like half the grade of a discussion board is responses. So I will uh, open that up for some people. And um, this uh, brings me to the point of our student who is an exemplary writer and tutor, Emily Leach. She will be jumping in on the discussion boards to help you, will help you with first drafts. Please take advantage of her being able to help you. Sometimes students do a better job of explaining sentence structure, things like that, uh, tell you the trick tricks and tips that they have and it's uh, a lot better to meet with somebody than trying to read text and also don't worry about the quizzes too much the MLA quizzes I'm going in there reading everybody's individually because I don't agree that some of the questions in the quizzes were really covered very well in the lecture um, the kind of things I haven't seen used before myself with modern language association style. It's a learning curve in itself as is using the computer, uh, using Canvas, and um, you've, you've got to get going. Uh, that, that's all I can tell you. We're gonna run out of semester, folks. And if you're behind, time to catch up. Thank you and see you at the next video.